So I got this thing three and a half, maybe eh, three and a half, four feet down. This is the most simplistic setup you can possibly use while crappie fishing. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Quick one tonight. It's a Monday evening. Just got off work. Got an email or it was a Facebook message. I can't remember which about how to find crappie in thick weeds. And right now it's mid-May here in Wisconsin, Minnesota. These crappie are going to be spawning. Um, this question was actually came from a guy who lives in southwest Minnesota. Those lakes are fairly shallow, relatively. I mean, deepest parts are probably 15 to 17 feet, but they're pretty thick with vegetation. There's not a ton of brush in those lakes, um, but there are massive weed beds. So I wanted to show you on side imaging what crappie look like in weeds. Some of these are thick weeds, some of them are sparse. So we're just gonna go through it on side imaging and walk through my settings and show you what they look like. And then we're gonna go, because they're spawning, fun time to catch them. We're gonna tie on the bobber rig or the little fixed bobber rig with a hair jig, cast out and get some of these fish. So uh, let me show you what it looks like on side imaging. All right, so this is the massive weed flat. We're in about four, four feet of water. These crappie are gonna be anywhere from three to six feet of water. It's really hard to see fish in these massive weed flats. What you're trying to look for are bright spots in the weeds. So you got all this thick vegetation through here. What I'm looking for are little breaks in the weed pattern. Like there might be some fish in that section there. There's little bright spots. Notice I got it 40 feet left and right of my boat. Here's a bright spot right there. There's a good example. I'm looking for bright spots and shadows. I'm gonna screenshot this so you guys can see it a lot better. I don't know if you can, how well you can see it, but there's a shadow right here and there's a bright spot. That is what I'm looking for in thick, thick weeds. Okay, there's a few of them there. This is, this is pretty tough. There we go. There were some more shadows and some bright spots in the top right corner. I'm going to screenshot it for you so you can see it a lot better. Top right corner of the screen, there's some shadows and there's some bright spots. So that is what I'm looking for amidst these weeds. The weeds are going to be one single color or kind of like a mixture of duller gold pattern, which is kind of the pattern I got here. Um, but these bright spots and the shadows, that is what I'm looking for for fish. I don't know if they're crappie. I don't know if they could be bass, walleye, pike, a bunch of different things. But that is what I'm looking for right now on this weed bed. The next thing I always like to look for is breaks in these weeds. I don't think there's going to be a ton of breaks. They look pretty, pretty thick down there. It's This is super clear water. Um, all right, so the top right corner of that screen there, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's some brighter spots there. Those brighter spots in that darker area, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Settings on this thing, Here's here we go with settings. Contrast, I usually set to 40, 40 to 50. Brightness is auto medium. Um, I don't really touch it a whole lot. These Garmin units and a lot of these units are just naturally set up pretty well. But what I'm looking for is these dark spots. There's another dark spot right there. These dark spots amidst all these weeds, those are breaks. And you can see there's bright spots in the middle of those dark spots. Those are probably fish. Only way you know for sure is if you uh, mark a waypoint, throw a buoy out and cast to them. But that is what I'm looking for. And uh, let's, let's go through, I'm gonna actually, let's throw a waypoint on this one. And new waypoint back all right so I put a waypoint on this dark spot down here we're gonna navigate back to that that waypoint there there's my waypoint that <laughs> I apparently left it as a rock pile but we'll navigate back to that and uh, see if we can find some fish super super simple setup I'm going with the uh, six and a half foot normally I go with eight foots with barber setups but if you're casting a lot these six and a half foot casting rod that's what it's made for casting and dock shooting four pound mono and I'm going with my hand tied jig tied this guy myself there's a 1 16th ounce ACC crappie sticks jig and then this is a half inch rod and bobs I'll explain everything later let's catch some fish first I'm only gonna put this I don't know three feet down I'm using my fixed bobber position on these three and ones some more over here Those breaks in the weeds, it's pretty much cheapers. <laughs> First cast, it just smoked it. These are not gonna be big fish. 
but they're going to be a ton of fun to catch, especially if they're biting like that. Hair jig, and he just, or she, that's a female. That's a spawned out female right there. Yeah, that's a spawned out female, white belly, that's how you can tell. Spawned out female. Ooh, smack my trolling motor on that one. Oh my goodness, back to back cast. This is a this is a good fighter. Come here, bud. It's nice when you got a little bit of chop in the waves. Gets that hair jig some action and <laughs> look at that. Crazy. Crazy how how quick these fish are smacking it. But this is what happens during the spawn. If you land anywhere close to these their beds, and that's what these are, these little breaks in the weeds. That's where they're gonna bed. I'm not gonna keep any today, but there's a male. It's got that black belly. Better spot lock that thing. Got that black belly. That's a male. That's a nice male too. Let's measure it. A lot of you guys are talking about, I don't know what a nine inch fish looks like. That's a nine inch fish. Look at that. There we go. Just a touch over nine. You guys telling me I don't know what a nine inch fish looks like. Nine inch crappie. They're not big. I know. These are quality eaters. I just talked to somebody at the boat ramp. They got their limit. Uh, I think they got their limit of like 20 crappie or something for the boat. 20 or 30 and solid eaters. Good meal. So let's catch some more. So I got this thing three and a half, maybe eh, three and a half, four feet down. This is the most simplistic setup you can possibly use while crappie fishing. No hassle with minnows or plastics getting pulled off. Just a simple hair jig and a bobber setup. And oh, he just smacked it just like that and I missed him. A lot of times he'll hit on the fall and just start running with it. I can actually see, this water is so clear, I can actually see the breaks in the weeds up there. I'll go up there and get some underwater footage for you guys in a bit. First, let's catch some more crappie. Oh, I, I missed them. Swing and a miss. Oh, there it was. That was a, I don't know if you guys saw that from here, but there, that's a negative bite. That bobber went sideways. It was sitting straight up and down, and all of a sudden it went straight sideways real quick. That would be a negative bite. These fish come up and grab it and kind of run towards the surface with it. That makes that bobber go sideways. It's another nice eater. He smoked it too. There we go. Get out of there, bud. Ouch. It's another spawned out female. Oh, smacked it right away. Dang. Yeah, it's a, these are no doubt hits. Beautiful day. Finally got the warm front come through and broke the cold front. Two days ago it was like in the 50s and today is like 85. Here's one. There he is. Wearing out these crappie with this super simple setup. There's a male. Look how dark that one is. It's another nine incher. Let's put him on the scale. He might be 10. Oh, he's nine and a half. Nine, nine and a half, almost nine and three quarters there. Yep, nine, nine's right there. Cool looking fish, I'm gonna throw him in the live well. There he is. This is a decent one. Nope. It was only about an eight inch fish. Yeah. What's that? 
Yeah, they're all spawned out right here. Yeah. You can just drift through here if you want, I don't care. Yeah, I'll scoot over. I don't know what to think about that. He was a nice enough guy. It's just personally, if I'm in that boat, I'm not getting that close to another fisherman. If I, even I'm just chilling, having a few beers. Like I told him he could drift through here. I didn't care. But then he <laughs> started up his motor right over the top of the crappie. Oh, there he is. Oh, jeepers, crying. That break off? No, we just came flying out. Apparently, a too hard of a hook set. There's one. There we go. Yeah, this is another female. They're spawning out. Look at that. That is a flat belly. Normally, they're they're like poof, big puffed out belly, but that is a female that is spawned out. You can tell it's a female because they got the white belly. That male. I'm gonna pull that other one out of the live well here in a second and it's gonna be really, really dark. I don't know, comment below what uh, what you would have done in that situation. There's a fish, we're right on him. Oh, here's a male. You can tell by how dark he is. That's a good male too. That's a solid, that's a definite 10 incher. See the male's got the black belly, that's a definite 10 inch fish. It's gotta be 10. Oh yeah, that's a solid, solid fish for this lake. There's our 10, 10 and a quarter. All right. That is a solid, solid crappie. So you gotta create your own movement by popping that bobber along. This is the most simple way to catch crappie in the spring. But it's the simplest, least amount of effort. There's one. Hair jig, bobber. Don't have to replace minnows or plastics or anything like that. Just watch that bobber go down and reel them in. It's that simple. It's that simple. Yeah, that guy's just shy of nine, I bet. That bobber started to go sideways on me again. There was one, yeah. That time it went sideways on me. There's another male. I know they're not two pounders, not even one pounders, but if you're just catching crappie to eat, these be good ones, especially for up north. See you, buddy. All right. Well, there we go. That's, uh, that's gonna wrap it up. This is actually a really nice fish I caught off camera. Um, this is just shy of, just shy of 12 which is pretty good for this lake and put him put her back in the live well it's a it's a female you got the white belly but she's spawned out um, that's a really nice fish for this lake i'm gonna put her back real quick so super simple setup six and a half foot acc crappie sticks casting rod this is also a rod that i uh, dock shot with down in tennessee on watts bar lake uh, four pound mono 1000 size pc fun viper x spinning reel i'm really liking the color combo between uh the Viper and the ACC. And this is just a half inch rod and bobs. Rod and bobs, this is that three in one slip float. If you noticed, it's got two little notches here. Let's see if we can get this. It's got two notches. I was using this bottom one closest to the spring. That locks it in um, as a fixed bobber. That other notch closest to the stem, that is actually used as a slip bobber, but you couldn't get a more simplistic rig than this. Hair jig, it's got beat up. You can definitely tell this hair jig has gotten beat up by, uh, by some crappie. That's a, paint is all chipped away right now. Yeah, definitely have caught a fish or two on that hair jig. But super simple setup, 
I'm gonna link everything below. I went over and got some screenshots actually after I got done fishing that spot. And I wanted to show you, it was a better illustration in deeper water. So these crappie tend to suspend right above the weed bed. So normally what I look for, if I can't find any bright spots, is you look for the shadows above the weeds, okay? Because normally these weeds won't cast shadows uh, unless you get into some cabbage with really big leaves on them. But normally it doesn't happen. A lot of times you'll see kind of like a peppering of either bright spots or shadows. I've got an illustration here. I was in about eight to nine feet of water and you could really, you could see both. You could see the, the bright peppering and you could see the shadows. Those shadows represent sus fish suspended off the bottom and the further sh the shadow away from that bright spot is the higher that fish is suspended in the water column. So hopefully that helps. I think it was Leon sent me that message on Facebook or you sent me an email, something like that. So first of all, appreciate asking the question. I hope that kind of gives you a ballpark of how to solve the issue of fishing a southwest Minnesota lake. It's pretty shallow. There's a lot of weeds. I know that. You're looking for the breaks in the weed beds. I found a little bit of a pocket where the weeds just didn't grow as tall. Um, also, you're looking for those shadows on top of the weeds. These crappie are going to suspend above them. A little slip bobber, a little fixed bobber rig and a hair jig this time of year does work on these crappie. Uh, yeah. Had fun tonight, little evening trip after work. I appreciate you watching as always. Um, if you have any questions like this, like uh, Leon sent me here, be, feel free, comment section below, or you can message me on the Facebook or Instagram. They're great video ideas. I hope you enjoyed this one. Use that side imaging, so important. Side imaging, 40 feet left and right. Look for those shadows, look for those bright spots above the weeds. That's where those crappie are gonna be. So, I'm gonna get off the lake. Because if I stay any longer, I know I'm going to try and catch a limit. And then I have to fillet these fish up. And I, I don't really have time for that tonight because i got to get these videos out for you guys. So, again, appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next one.